second. But... Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 28th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have a co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's my party, and I'll flex if I want to. <laughs> flex uh, if I want to. Okay. And our guests today are Boudreaux, Dread Pirate Higgs, River, and Sarah. Welcome. Oh, nice. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. Superstition, I'll get it out. And posferianism, I'm sure. If you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Well, I'm back. what's our topic today? Today we're talking about new beginnings. New Yay. beginnings. And mm -hmm. how to start your own atheist group, why it's important, tips and tricks, our past successes. But before we get into that, I do want to say that this is our last show. We've been doing this for 365 episodes over seven That's years. Seven years. Yeah, a lot of the early episodes weren't recorded, so we didn't count them. The, so well, they're broadcasted recorded. out into space. They're broadcasted right. out into space. They're somewhere hovering yeah. around at the moment right uh -huh. now. But I can't imagine a greater group of people coming in to celebrate this moment with us. We That's appreciate sure. everybody here. Yeah, and thank you. Before we get into the hysterics where we cry and oh, oh, <laughs> it's buying some time, buying some time. Nice, nice, nice. Before we buy uh, again into the hysterics where we throw out some tips, let's do our last Pasiferian invocation as a group. Guys, would you please bow your heads and wrap your noodly appendages together as we commemorate uh -huh. this moment? with our own Dread Pirate Higgs. Who lead us our newly lead lord, us. who art in a calendar, all Dante be thy news. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cousin, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever, I was loving watching Sarah's face through the entire. <laughs> the first time it, it from... happens, it's like it's like uh, you know, it's like uh, you know, it just comes over you. Like yeah, sauce, yeah, yeah. It through. was a complete look of shock, <laughs> and then it was like she was actually being touched by the newly Lord. She's just like, "Oh, this is great! This is great! I'm feeling it! I love it! I love it! What is going on? Oh, I love this! This is great! What do I need to do? How do I participate? What do I got to get done?" fantastic uh something so about this i don't know <laughs> sarah i'd be remiss yeah. how you been since last week good um busy very busy busy very mom busy. stuff busy mom stuff busy new wife stuff busy marriage life stuff you got a lot of yeah. things going on got a lot i'm actually about to have my uh two-year wedding anniversary nice and i got myself a present it's a mouse pad uh, hmm. oh oh congratulations what? okay okay, okay felicitations cool. yeah the mouse zoom, zoom was doing the thing where it was taking the background of the mouse pad i, know. I was yeah. like mm -hmm. is that a custom mouse pad that was cut around no, zoom is just really smart on cutting things out okay mm -hmm. very cool very cool uh riv always good to see you how you been since last week also please tell me about the ocarina around your neck i need to know about it oh thank you yeah yeah well i got it year two or more ago and it's red it's triple clay in china it's a holy function 12 hole ocarina you know uh oh but okay. uh so good to easy practice um i'm actually in the land of the book band right now on a for a family member's destination wedding wow. and uh you know so i'm just my background i'm actually in my in my in my car at the moment i just had this background up and you know so but I'm just okay. staying busy with classes coming to semester coming to an end and just very busy. Always learning, always developing new talents and uh, a world, a life well lived of new experiences that you're constantly absorbing, Rev. Nice person to know. <laughs> Boudreaux, speaking of musical instruments, what's going on with you? What new things have you picked up since last time we spoke? Oh boy. Uh, 
new computer, I guess. Nice. Uh, I wanted to cool. ask Larry what game I need to fire up on this. <laughs> we have recommendations. Uh, yeah, yep, we, we have do. Recommendations. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Um, oh, seventy six. I played that a little bit, actually. We are. Yeah. Um, I'm going to dread about this. Now that it's complete, show. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I won't be dismissive of games I haven't played, but still, all right, continue. Yeah. continue. Okay. But yeah, no, no right, uh, right. soccer's in full swing with the kids, and that's mm. consumes mm. most of our days. We'll okay. be heading to Louisville soon. Um, and I apologize, I haven't been able to do the radio show for a long time because our Orange Theory class is smack dab right in the middle of. No sweat, no sweat, so no apologies. Moving it to 11 was great. I got to join, and, and now I'm just sad that this is it. So, yeah. Yeah, we could still always yeah. do virtual summit meetings. There's still you yeah. know, in discussions. And, we'll yeah. and we could always just decide to get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We could do like a one a month, just what video games uh -huh. you're playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That stuff out. So. Yeah. Also, yeah. have so you had a thing? So if you guys didn't know anything about Bujo, I've been over to his place, I think two years ago, and uh, I wanted to go play disc golf with him, right? We're hanging out. And mm -hmm. I, I have my discs, and I have like maybe about $40 worth of discs, which isn't much. That's like maybe four discs total, right? And I pull them out, and they're all sparkly, sparkly shiny and new. He comes out with like an old backpack. I'm like, well, these are the discs I had when I was first playing. He pulls them out, and it's like a first edition, one of the most popular discs of all time that have like 20 editions after the point. Oh, Another really? first edition another pre-flight number and i'm like eric we can't i'm sorry sorry for saying this Boudreau, we can't throw these discs these discs are too valuable and we just pull them up on ebay one after the other each one's like well that's 600 bucks this this, wow. this one's 400 this one's 40 i'm like you have like thousands of dollars with the plastic you don't want to be throwing around here and Boudreau's like well i'm gonna sell them but i was like Boudreau, we gotta wash them first <laughs> <laughs> Grass, get the grass stains off. Just wash them a little bit. Wash them a little bit. Take some nice pictures of them and like, don't act like these are like the box of Star Wars toys you have in your closet for like ever in a day. Like shine them up, like dress them up, put a little dress on them and be like, this is a valuable thing. And then the collectors will come to it. I, I He's got a lot of cool collectibles is my main mm -hmm. thing. So if you ever need yep. some spare cash, just, just <clears throat> boy Boudreau, he'll help you out. He'll help you out. Yeah. You Dread Pirate Higgs, how have you been? I've been all right. Been all right. I'm, uh, as you know, I'm enrolled in the paramedic program, so it's full, full steam ahead um, nice. into uh, session five of uh, 16. So, uh, yeah, great guns, man. It's lots of work, mm. but uh, really, really cool to learn all this kind of stuff and, uh, you know, expand knowledge. Always learning, right? So, mm. But uh, also uh, on the other front, the Pastafarian front, uh, my lawyer has kicked it up a notch and uh, uh, we've issued a letters to Passport Canada and um, the Ministry of uh, Public Safety who uh, you know, are depriving me of my security license, private investigator license sure. because of this cool. photo issue, right? So he's essentially laid it down and said, look, uh, you guys don't rectify your behavior. We're going to uh, sue your office. So govern yourselves accordingly. Mm, and um, nice. There you go. Oh, so we're just waiting be... for, we're waiting for a long enough silence, you know, like a two week silence. Yes. And, and or some kind of response after which we will uh, submit freedom of information requests to get all inter office memos and emails and all that kind of stuff as evidence. Nice. And then, Go right for the juggler. Right. Every letter that you send to them needs to be on old parchment paper in sepia. <laughs> a watermark. Yeah, with a book. Jolly Roger. With a Jolly Rancher on the back is just like, yeah. who am I making concern? This is a perfectly reasonable legal letter, but it's on right. it's on burnt paper on the sides. They like pull it out. They're like, what in the world's going on? It's him again. Yeah. With an X so marks the spot at the bottom. Yeah, dread yeah ma malicious hit. compliance. Well, we're we're yes. actually we're actually looking to to sue for, da for to sue for damages. Good. So there's uh, five government institutions we'd be going after, and we'd hit it high. We'd go for like five million dollars, and see you know if we can if that'll shake them up enough mm. and cause enough public debate and outrage sure. that um, ICBC just cavitates, you know, and just just delivers or performs on on the request in in any way that it doesn't make your legal uh standpoint more 
more uh, vulnerable, you're welcome to record this progress as much as you want off my Zoom channel, on to your channel. Yeah. I would love to see progress on this because one of my favorite things to do is watching people stand for their rights. And I will watch a lot of videos on YouTube about people who will record as press in public places, like outside on the street, on a public sidewalk, and cops being like, you're recording in public. And they'll be like, yeah. And they're like, you you can't do that. It's making people uncomfortable. It's like, you're not the feelings police. You're a law police. And they're yeah, that's, yeah, that's saying, right. I'm allowed to record exactly right. in public. It's like, well, this is too public. It's like, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if people are upset. In the same way you're doing what I imagine is a uh, constitutional, though it's Canadian constitutionally protected activity of expressing yourself. And there is a institution clamoring down on it saying, well, you can you can express yourself if you're within this religious boundary. And that's not the way how that system should work. So I would like to see you keep fighting. Larry, what's up? Well, not only that, but people have to remember that protests, the original protests was like the Boston Tea Party. Yeah. You know, protests don't have to be within the bounds of the law. That's Thank my you. opinion, by the way. Ooh, what I'm ooh. saying is. You know, when they when the police come to, you know, your your protest and say, OK, you can protest, but you have to do it three blocks over there in the designated area. Mm. That's not what protests are. Look at any right. of the protests in the 60s. Were they following the law? Were they, yep. um, you know, signing off on charters, you know, for the permit to, to protest? No, yeah. I'm not advocating to break the law. What I'm advocating is you have to do something. Um, well, what am I trying to say? That can't it, be easily ignored by the... Uh, so that can't be easily ignored, I yeah, guess. By, I so just, that's hard. the point. Stand up, stand up yeah. for your right to, to uh, publicly protest uh, what you uh, believe in. Have I mean, if, if you had a designated area, you know, okay, it, oh, you have an opinion about something? Okay, go to your designated uh, protesting corner and protest. That's that, mm-hmm. the, it's something that, uh, how it works. It keeps the point. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I mean, don't... it'd be like telling uh, you know people with the watchtowers that they can't stand on street corners. Right. Right. Thank you for bringing yeah, exactly. all up. I agree. I support it. And I also say like, don't hurt people. You know, don't cause harm. But otherwise, if you got a point to make, make the point. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. and, and and if you got to break the rules so that you don't do it within the boundaries of those who are you're fighting against, say it's so allowable. As long as you're not hurting people, I say go for it. Let's. I, I want to yeah. see some meaningful protests. Yeah, you you got to remember that some about. laws are meant to be broken. Look at the laws in Nazi Germany. You know mm. uh, what the Nazis yeah. did was not against the law. Yeah, because they wrote laws to support it. Yeah, you have to stand up <laughs> against that kind of thing. You got to break the yeah, law. Legal does not mean moral. Yeah. Right. Ooh, interesting, 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 man. We got not law. All That's laws there. are moral. Yeah, yeah. Legal does not necessarily automatically equate to moral. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there are awful laws, fools, if you will say. All right, guys, I want to talk about new beginnings. This is the last show that we're doing, but it doesn't mean that it's the end. Because what I wanted to do is showcase some of the cool things that we've each individually learned about starting our own secular circles in areas where we did not expect to find like-minded individuals. And successes that we've had, tips that we can offer, and encouragement, while not a call to action, but definitely an encouragement for you as a listener to, if you're listening to this and also secondary minded, start your own community because there's no reason why this should be the end of anything. If anything, it should spur you on to believe that you can do the same thing yourself. So I will throw out mine and I'd love to hear a tip from everybody else. We'll do a roundtable format, but Larry, my my thing was when I moved to Knoxville for the first time, the first thing I did was I started looking for an atheist community. And when I say I looked for an atheist community, I mean I looked for a A-T-H, don't expect me to spell it on the air, but I was <laughs> looking for the A word community. Online. You got online, online and specifically use that word to find us. I wasn't looking for humanists. I wasn't looking for rationalists. I wasn't looking for secular groups. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking for free thinkers. I wasn't looking for humanism. I wasn't looking. You know what I'm talking about. I wanted Uh the hard A. Just hook me up with the hard A guys. (laughs) Because these are the people that I want to hang out with. These are the people I want to ask questions to. And I was finally at a point where I didn't want to consider myself. Well, I'm just not. 
uh, uh, non-denominational or I'm or agnostic or, or I'm agnostic. I was like, no, I know I'm an atheist. I want to meet other people who also know that they're atheists because that just saves me a lot of time. And when I look for, right. I found one, one group, one group on the whole internet in my immediate area in all of Tennessee, or at least the general area of Tennessee. And East Tennessee. Where I lived in Knoxville. And there was mm -hmm. this one group and Larry had his group. He's like, well, I'm the atheist guy. I'm just like, are you, I typed him. I sent him an email. I was like, are you guys still meeting? He's like, yeah, come over to this pizza place. And I'm like, hot dog, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Went over there, shook his hands. <laughs> like, Larry's like, you sound nice. You want to go on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to guess for sure. <laughs> I need to no. guess. Yeah. And I was like, no, yeah, uh, let's, yeah. Do let's do it. Good job, Larry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, it's yeah, 22 and then, years and then, ago. Huh? Did you ask me, uh, oh, what's your favorite anime? I'm like, uh, yeah. where do we start? <laughs> he's a good guy. He's a good guy. That's how you know he's a good one. That's how you know he's a good one. So we met some really good people. I met I met Boudreaux in a similar fashion too, but uh, it's it's everybody has like a really interesting story for how I met them. But uh, Larry, mm -hmm. I want to say like my thing was, if you're looking for atheists, look for atheists online. I, you will be surprised. I did not expect to find such a great group of people to fall into, but, yeah. and I moved around a lot. Right. And same thing with Boudreaux when I was doing like my atheist talks, like he found me just because he was looking for guy who's doing talks, atheism channels. Yeah. And stuff like that. I found dread through the atheism talks that I was doing, but like look for atheists specifically. And mm -hmm. you can, you can save yourself a lot of time from all the other keywords. If you just look for the hard A, I found that to be, and there's a wonderful group of people to look for. Dread, what do you got? Uh, I was going to say, I think you and I actually connected through the street epistemology. Yes. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, I because I think I was a pastafarian then, even. Um. So, but uh, you know, just just developing that uh, you know reliable methodology for examining one's own beliefs and the beliefs of others, I think. That's a that's a good community to to get into. Nice, Sarah. Oh, same. Did oh, I... same, same. Oh, same, same, same. Nice. I know everybody here now because I met you, Ty. Um, I met you, Wombat, on uh, the uh, street epistemology. Ah, okay, 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 okay. And then we got you into this one, so you can make. <laughs> so whole thing is, look for connections, mm -hmm. and then even from that community, you can make your own community communities right. Mm -hmm. right and then those communities can, can further spread out and build but communities can make communities that's the main thing and i think i didn't i wouldn't have the opportunity to to really even discover street epistemology if i didn't have the wherewithal to have the courage to meet other atheists and so like reaching out and finding a community is my most recommended step before you start one my recommendation is look for one because there might even be one that's available for you that you could work with get networks with uh, build friends with and then start your own separate communities that can merge together and become mm -hmm. like a, a, a super group of friends to hang out with. But look for right. atheists, look for them. They are available, they are around. And right. I think just by virtue of you looking for one will make you realize that there are a lot more around you than you ever anticipated. I would have never thought there'd be over a thousand uh, atheists in Knoxville when I was, when I first started. Yeah. I was just surprised. Especially one in, in an organized group, which right. is now a, um, a 401 3C, 501C. 501C3. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to throw out tips for starting your own groups or finding your own groups. Uh, Boudreaux, do you happen to have a group making tip? Um, I, I, I do. And, and maybe my tip would be specifically not um, regarding building a group, but uh, keeping a group. Because one thing I learned over the years of doing Summit. And I don't. Many of you maybe already know what Summit's all about, but just kind of quick version of it, uh, and and ties been to to several. Um, just a group of people that meet in my basement um, once a month, and we have food, we have drink, we just talk about everything surrounding, mostly a lot like this show, um, and uh, and it's a good time. And I usually invite my open-minded friends, um, and we've had occasion for two things that have happened. One, anyone who's extremely right or extremely left um and get they can get they because it's you know it's in person and uh, uh 
they can get to the point where feelings get hurt and people get upset, people get angry. Um, so we've we've kind of, and I hate to say it, but we've kind of had to censor certain people from the group just because they don't work. They mm-hmm. they they talk they talk to one person, you know, that's a group of people, and you'll they'll have a conversation with one person. They're just arguing. Oh, it's only one. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's just it's ugly. So I've had to kind of curate a little, and it, yeah, it sounds it happens horrible but yeah i mean we've done it here on the show i think too Mm -hmm. um and then the other thing too is is we like having everyone having a drink having a good time but that's the other other tip i give you is make sure people understand you know don't overdo it because with with lots of drinking comes more of the same and we even had one one guy get a dui on his drive home so that's really trying to push yeah yeah so we push responsible responsible drinking and uh and again just just we we kind of have to shave off the, the far right and the far left and it's unfortunate but that's that's my tip if, if you're doing something similar to, to summit yeah especially if it's not conducive to a good conversation right yeah i've, like, I've lost two really good friends because of it too hopefully not through the dui <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. it's like oh no. they're locked up now it's like oh dang right. oh, yeah. oh, dude. <laughs> Okay, well, that's that's good. Being willing to make changes in the interest of fostering a good community, right? Like be able to make those moderations is a good one. Dread, I see you. What's up? Any recommendations? Yeah, you know, I, I agree with uh, everything Boudreaux said. It, you know, at the same time, um, you have to be willing, I guess, to cut away those people that end up being quite toxic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in that same vein, um, you know, I, there's a couple of people I've known for years and years and years. And when, you know, we started getting into sort of more of those, uh, deeper conversations, um, it, it actually unveiled some very problematic aspects of their yeah. personalities. Not crazy. And, you know, as a consequence, I decided you know, that's probably not something I need in my life. And, uh, and so, you know, it actually, you know, uh, allowed me to see that, um, you know, you have to curate, curate your own friends. Yes. Um, you know, you have to make sure that, uh, uh, you're not just trying to acquire friends for its own sake, that you're trying to acquire quality friends, um, that, you know, can contribute uh, in positive ways and not necessarily always by agreeing, but, you know, by being able to have uh, deep conversations where you may disagree, but which are constructive and meaningful and uh, educational. Right. So Mm. I wanted to throw out like in the same vein of black lives matter and they do. I also want to make the point that you matter, that your time matters, that your friendship matters. And that if you are spending your friendship with somebody, it's good to get at least a net return on that investment because your friendship does have value. And so if people are taking that friendship and just dumping it in the trash, don't waste your mm-hmm. friendship on, on people like that. Because at a certain point, you have to recognize that you matter, your time matters, and that your friendship most importantly matters. And a lot of the times when I was doing street epistemology, it's sort of like discount therapy for a lot of people <laughs> who never yeah. really had an opportunity to have like these meaningful talks with someone who was willing to be uh, neutral or unbiased in their approach to figure out why someone thinks a certain way. And a lot of people love that, but a lot of people have so much baggage that they need to be responsible for getting themselves out of before they can constantly engage with me as a person for whom to resolve a lot of their issues with. Like I found the process for my own part resolving my own uh, biases religiously and my own dogma limitations to it, like being a bit more of an open-minded person, it'd be a rewarding, you know, challenge for myself, but it's not something that I would constantly call up Fred on the phone and be like, Fred, I got a problem. Figure that. Well, I don't agree, Fred. Well, I don't celebrate. Well, maybe you had some points, Fred. Oh, I don't know. Okay. And then he hangs up the phone. It's like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> right, right. Life's too short. <laughs> yeah. Life's too short. Enjoy it. And if you can, I, the way I think of it is you can have two different kinds of friends, ones that celebrate who you are, for all of your uh, differences and not because of your limitations, but not in spite of your limitations, but because those limitations make up who you are and your perspectives make up who you are and they celebrate every part of you. Or you can have friends that 
don't do that. And my recommendation is spend time with the friends who do celebrate who you are, the real you, the authentic you, because those are the ones that value your friendship. And I am yeah, friends are the family you choose. Exactly. And families are the friends that you choose in a lot of way too. It's great. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Thank you guys. I've chosen some out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for being people yeah. that I feel like I can celebrate my real self around and, and just be honest yeah. with. And those are the kinds of people to foster into a new community. I do want to get like one more piece of feedback. Sarah, what would you recommend as far as like starting a group or finding friends? Oh, Rib, did you have a comment real quick? Well, if it's all the same, I was going to say real quick at, at the beginning, I wanted to say that uh, I met uh, Larry, you know, through ASK. You know, he just, he's been, you know, just a quick note, you know, this is the last show he's doing. And I, I think that's can't be overstated enough how he's maintained, talking about maintaining groups. He's uh, been this bulwark, you know, I'm gonna put, not to put you on the spot there, Larry, but this bulwark for just uh, keeping that a, the crew together. And is that a word we're allowed to say of, on the radio, Larry? Can we say that word? Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got me last. You know, you uh, last mm -hmm. uh, well, you thank know, you. Uh, thank you, Ruth. you know, through COVID and everything and just keeping us all rallied together and, you know, got back on uh, um, uh, tap, uh, the tap room and mm -hmm. I need to get back going there myself, you know, once semester, so on, so on, he's up. Yeah, there. I'm planning but, to start going again in, in May, uh, get out of the uh, house a little bit. But nice. yeah. And, yeah. COVID well, had me of, scared for a long time to get, yeah. to get oh, out and get yeah, with yeah, people. I mean, layers. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, but then I was going to say the, the tip thing is that I'm very much working that on myself. Uh, but there's just the upkeep and making sure people, you know, remember, you know, just that presence of, you know, hey, uh, you know, um, just a random invite every so often, just like a little ping that lets people know sometimes there's all they need sometimes is a little reminder that, you know, hey, I'm thinking about you. It's just Aww. such a, a small notion. It Aww. goes so far. You know. Sarah and I both got true, our hearts. True, true, right true that. Like, that was nice. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Aw, that was very sweet. That was very yeah. nice. Thank you, Rip. No, uh, <clears throat> we're getting kind of close to the bottom of the hour. I sure. uh, probably need to take a break. Sarah, you're we'll, up next. We'll be we'll right back, back. Okay. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year, have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high-top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can also find us online at our home page at knoxvilleatheist.org. We're also on Facebook and meetup.com. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Start Sorry. one. Wombat, where do you pick, want to pick up? Yo, we are talking about new beginnings, how to start your own groups, tips mm -hmm. for keeping those groups, and all the successes that we've had. Just round up in one nice celebration episode with all our friends who've been with us over the last seven years as we've like cultivated like communities both in Knoxville, in Kentucky, in Canada, of all places, mm -hmm. in wherever the world I'm living at right now, I think south of Nashville, uh, Alaska. Might <laughs> <Yeah>. be <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Washington in a couple of years, but you know. Very true, true. But we've had like multiple people from all around the world on the yeah. show. And we're just saying England, um, yeah, Sweden, Sweden, we had, Bahamas, uh, Florida, Africa. You know, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of different people. Uh, yep. Middle East, even. Yeah. So it's been a good show. It's been a good run. Uh, Sarah, what recommendations would you bring up for tips for keeping a nice community, secular minded community? What do you got? Um, well, um, I would. I think it's difficult to find like in-person kind of things. Um, 
and certainly more populated areas. So if you want to do like an online search, you want to go for your nearest city. So if you, mm -hmm. for example, um, my nearest city, I'm not in this city, but my nearest city is Savannah, Georgia. So okay. I would check that out. Um, back in LA, it was easier. Everything was LA. Um, but yeah, you're going to find um, more atheists in uh, heavy, heavily populated because the smaller populated, there are still atheists there, but they're kind of closeted, you know, mm. small town closeted, you know, mm. does yeah. that make sense? Well, another thing about big cities is they have universities and universities um, have a lot of people that go there as believers and leave as atheists yeah and they stick around so it's true you're in knoxville that's certainly the case it happened to me dread what do you thought oh dread okay <laughs> what are you in your comment what's up you had a comment um well I, I was gonna say you know respecting uh sarah's comment there about big cities you know um i live in a very small uh city you know about eight thousand people and managed to come up with more than a dozen Pastafarians um, who, uh, you know, enjoy sitting around. And, uh, you know, one thing I would recommend totally is uh, having a, a, you know, like a communal book, like a, like a, like a communal meal. Um, of course, Pastafarians, we have our go-to as, you know, some kind of a pasta dish, but it, it really does bring people together, uh, sharing food and enjoying uh, you know, essentially breaking bread together. Nice. Um, and there's a lot of good conversation that comes out of that. But um, you'd be surprised, uh, you know, yes, they're closeted, but that's only because they don't know their neighbor is an atheist or a, a right, Pastafarian. Right. <laughs> and sometimes all it takes is, you know, someone to uh, put an ad in the paper and say, you know, this is what's going on. Come over and check it out. And all of a sudden you've got half a dozen people showing up. So, yep. You know, uh, and I think this was when I was in University of Kentucky land. So I was at least in Lexington. When I started doing my uh, street epistemology or uh, Socratic examination talks, and it was largely because moving from Knoxville, where I had a community that Larry had set up, I felt basically really isolated because I didn't know of anybody around. And I thought, well, let me leverage that I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and I really want to engage and see if I can find a community. I'm at least going to be open with what I'm about and have an opportunity to talk to people. And if anything, that at least scratched my itch for social interaction, given that I have a job that keeps me working on a weird day night cycle. So I set up my table and I did my talks. And then next thing you know, Boudreaux reaches out to me and he's like, oh, I see the things that you're doing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's someone mm -hmm. else that like wants to talk about this, but not like in a table format, but just wants to sit and eat food and have a conversation. And that's how we met. And then eventually he invited me over to his place. Uh, we had the summit a couple of times, which was just like invited to his uh, basement, but invited me in like a good friend. There was no weird judgment level. Uh, like, oh, like I just felt like I could be very open with uh, uh, Bujo at all cases. He was open with me. We had like a really good forum that we could discuss. And I think that communal event where I got to see other people interacting. It wasn't maybe until like the second time when I saw brand new people who were new to the summit and I realized the shoes that I was in, but from a different perspective. And they were just like, I don't know if I could say this. Like, yeah, you can say this. <laughs> <You're the laughs> easy button. We can have these conversations. And then I saw how much uh, uh, Bujo loved, what was it, Sam Harris and the Darwin yeah. catalog. And I'm like, oh, I hate these things. Like, oh, Tyrone always hates these things, but I like mm -hmm. these things. I'm like, it's cool. We have differing perspectives on a lot of stuff, but like there's truly no judgment and we were we're free to like eat and share thoughts with each other it's so rewarding to be able to do that on a face-to-face -face level i think there is an inherent need for us to be able to do that as humans so if you are a closeted atheist i would say take an opportunity to find a community because it could i didn't even know Bujo lived like ne very far away from me either he was like seven minutes away from my apartment right so it's not hard to find people even like the bedrock or the middle of america the most it's conservative the areas that you can think of. You can find people that are willing to accept you for who you are and, and have some good uh, chat with you. Um, I'd also say this too. Here's my extra tip before we get to Larry, because I, I, I apologize for skipping a step. 
I would say recognize that particularly atheists, I would say, are like herding a bag of cats, right? Mm -hmm. As Larry once told me. And we are not all the same. Maybe if you go to like a, a particular church on a block in Georgia, you might find a very many like-minded people who have been told to like a very specific thing, very specific sets of music, very specific types of clothing, et cetera. But for atheists, because we are less controlled by uh, a centralized dogmatic force. Not authoritarian. Authoritarian is probably the most. Yeah, we're not authoritarian. We're not. Yeah. You'll mm -hmm. find atheists that like ABC, some atheists that like Hulu, some atheists that love Disney, some atheists that are all about anime, some atheists that hate anime, 10,000%. They're not in this group. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll find, you'll find so many different people that disagree on like literally everything. But the one thing that they all agree on is that they don't believe in a God or that they don't believe in a certain kind of God or they don't find spirituality to be very important or that they like pasta and they like talking. <laughs> <laughs> There's room for everything. Which, what I'm saying. Go ahead, Dred. I, I was going to say, you know, you know, pastafarians are like that, like cat herding. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is, um, is that we just come to recognize that we don't need to impress people so much with our ideas about how mm. the world works mm. that, you know, we don't have to take ourselves so seriously that we have to get into our group in order to proselytize our positions and our politics and our beliefs and our spirituality. We can just be and just mm. take it at that. And, you right. know, so it, it allows for a looser community. Right. Um, but when we do get together, we have a lot of fun, right? Right. But I do want to. Oh, go ahead, Ray. Oh, so I was trying to miss. I trying to get better at timing thing. I tried to give in a moment to say, and it might not seem like that one common thing with some variations inevitably uh, might not seem like that much matters that much. Maybe when you compare all these different fields of you know interests and you know worldviews, but it's it's interesting because once you take away, once you have that one thing in common you have more room for natural influence to come in. And all of a sudden, not all the time, but a lot of the times you have a lot more common understanding. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, like the differences are never the, the most differing thing among us. It's always the commonality of the fact that of all the things that we do like, there's a lot more in that similar back than there is in difference back. But I do want to highlight, it's that the differences are never something that we take for granted. They are something to be celebrated. It's okay to be different. And when you realize that everybody's different, particularly in like atheist circles, like everyone's different. And you're like, this is OK. Like no one ever looks at me and they're like, you're kind of like a white guy, but your skin's just a little bit darker. That's uh. totally cool. It's like, don't frame me in that concept in the same way that and, and I'm going to throw this out. Like you wouldn't frame like a guy who's gay to being like, oh, but you're kind of like a straight guy, but you just like men. Or like uh, um, a person with no hair. You'd be like, oh, you're kind of like a person with hair, but you just don't have hair. It's like you don't have to go through an extra length to frame someone in a different box so that they're more palatable to a, your worldview. In fact, it's just accept me on the terms that I am, and that's far more valuable. And you don't have to like translate me from one sense to another sense because there are things that are worth noting about different people. And there are, and, and the way I think about it is like, it's an enrichment on my culture to understand that there are different people that go through different struggles, different prejudices, different uh, preferences. Maybe they have some new flavors that they bring to the table just by me learning about them. And that expands the contrast or the horizons that I operate under. I love knowing different kinds of people and I respect that. And I think it's something to be celebrated in particularly in very diverse groups. And we should always recognize that because what we do as a habit is we try to generalize. Our brains are always trying to generalize groups of people together. And we get into this tribalistic mindset where it's like, well, they all think this one thing, but I think this thing. It's like when you recognize that everyone's different, I think it helps you do that less. And that's for the benefit of both you, your mind. And that, that's not bad. It's not a bad thing. And it's not a bad that thing. That people are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Larry, I'm sorry for that, for that tirade. What would you recommend? <laughs> the oh, to, uh, community growing, to, what would you recommend? To keep a, 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 a group together, you mean over the years? Yeah, 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 yeah. And oh, start one, if anything. Uh, oh. One thing is a simple thing. And I started off by having uh, monthly meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. And that would be like uh, the second Tuesday of the month or uh, on the 15th of every month. 
but people would miss the date and they'd have to go another whole month, you know, just because they didn't remember that particular time. I, I would recommend that people pick a place and pick a time and do it every week, every week. That way, if they forget or if they miss one, they can just come back the next week. It's nice. it's always there. It's always the same time and always the same place. It I could guess. be a restaurant. It could be a sandwich shop. It could be a bar. It doesn't matter. Just make it consistent. Nice. Nice. I love uh, that. And be welcoming, of course. Yeah. 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 You know, that welcoming thing is also a really big point, too. Uh, the the sense of empathy is something that people can immediately recognize, right? And so mm -hmm. and I think it's one of the things that churches do very well. Like when you walk through a church, they're hugging you, they're shaking your hands, they're welcoming mm -hmm. you, they're calling you by their name. I'm brother XYZ, I'm sister XYZ. And you sit here next to my family and we'll all sing and dance together. When we're done, we'll shake hands, we'll hug and we'll leave and we'll do that for the Lord. And I'm like, you could do that with, for just... For the sake of just community. the community, just yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the friendship, yeah, just yeah. You know, just having an external family, right? Right, uh, there's no monopoly it's good and it's, it has over yeah. community, right? right. Okay. And it will hold together better in the okay. long run. Top things to stay away from, I would say. Okay, so <laughs> Boudreaux, you had a good one. It's like make sure you curtail the 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 more spicier members of your your pot anything else that you would recommend that we stay away from we'll do one last let's yeah. stay away from round table i, I that's a good one because uh in the beginning we we kind of just stayed away from politics um Ooh. because that that just it just added a layer of because there was such a broad spectrum of you know the, generally speaking i think a lot of there are some similarities between non-believers and politics sometimes but it can get it can get wonky wonky fast so you know we we originally had kind of a leave politics off the table but gosh it's become so much more a part of the world our daily lives that we started talking about it but just just carefully yeah um don't let it dom don't let it dominate the conversation maybe that's my best tip i like it that uh, works <laughs> yeah i um my thing would be things to stay away from is um, everyone's different. Everyone is different, but it's also good. Here's my thing. Everyone's different, but don't have just one community that you base that difference or your entire perspective off of. I would say if you are able to start one atheist community, have two, have three, like have small ones that are online, have small ones that you meet with in person, have ones that you meet only at work or that you're aware of have separate groups of friends that way your perspective of what what atheism or secularism or whatever that group is is about isn't just framed by those four or five people or those 1000 people that you always have contrasting opinions so that you never generalize too much on what the way sh things should be and the value behind that is a lot of times i'll end up in groups that are largely even when they're atheist inspired largely controlled by people of one specific race. And so like they'll have a potluck and they'll bring in their music and I'll be like, I don't like cold macaroni. And and what's <laughs> that guy's name? Oh, not Elton John, but some some other guy who like plays music you'd expect to hear in an elevator. You're like, why is it always these pants, this music <laughs> and this food? Like there has to be other groups that do things slightly different. So like when you go right. into different groups, you'll be like, oh, finally it is different. It's just the fact that these these guys like these one things these girls and guys like these different things and and my black dudes like <laughs> these other mm -hmm. things and it's nice to just know like okay they're all atheists but it's okay that they're it's they're okay that they're different i don't have to come up with one, one big complaint have diverse groups of friends that and it's okay for them to be separate dread pirate higgs what do you got yeah just a uh, you know just along the similar lines is uh, keep keep the conversations diverse mm -hmm. right you know uh don't don't shrink your bubble so much that uh you suffocate in it yeah um you, you want to make sure that your your bubble is big and uh i mean you know we inevitably get into bubbles and self-reinforcing yes. conversations but yes. you know as long as you're having sort of overlapping topics and uh and different and people leading with their interests which are you know kind of overlapping um that really helps to keep the the life in the party, uh, so to speak, so that it's not just dominated by one or 
two people who are always leading the conversation and uh, doing all the stuff. And then yes. all of a sudden people start, you know, uh, through attrition, they just start dropping off and yes. moving on to other well said, Dred. Yeah, life is a lot like you know Reddit. You you can fall into holes, and then you real you forget that the other subreddits are available or like a browser where you don't realize the browser's adjusting its cookies based on your mm -hmm. preferences. And when you search right. Apple, it it stops showing you the fruit and more the stock for Apple, and you don't realize it because you're just so used to being catered to that when you switch to a new browser, you're like, why doesn't this work anymore? Uh, you should have multiple browsers. You should be able to force mm. feedback or correct check your groups of friends so that one one very persuasive person doesn't end up controlling the entire dialogue sarah what's up you know uh dread actually um you reminded me of something that is like a pitfall in a group um where yes some people are very charismatic and they kind of dominate the conversation um maybe have some kind of like soft uh leader or whatever of the group that way that person can kind of um bring it back and give everyone a chance to kind of chime in you know maybe have a central topic if that's necessary um because yeah i have seen in many different groups um one or two people dominate the entire thing and then no one else gets the chance to say anything and then people stop coming you know moderator i think yeah mm. having, having a go. good moderator is, is important yeah i would also say you know inspire the soft leader or the people who feel like they're being left out to start their own group and have a separate group on their own terms and that way you can have a free market of groups where it's just mm. simply Hey, if you want to go to the one where it's it's more led by this particular guy's ideas, you have that. But you also have one where it's more community driven and it's more in your your taste. And you have a whole shelf of different groups that you have available to you at your leisure to to make or fall into as as you want to. But you never have to go full one hundred percent into just one or the other. You always have the options of making your own group. You always have that power, and so I uh, want us to exercise it. Uh, Riv, anything that you'd recommend that we watch out for? Uh, yeah, um, actually adding on everyone's kind of uh, points, just kind of adding one little element in there is that be vigilant in observation, especially in the early parts, right? If, if you know, someone does seem to have forming that natural kind of charisma and they're kind of dominating things, okay, note them, but also note the people who, you know, are just constantly not saying anything. And then try to be that soft person that kind of brings them into it. And then, you know, and not always avoid topics per se, I would say. I would say two times in a row. <laughs> um, uh, feel it out, right? If everyone has a general super sardonic sense of humor, why mm -hmm. dampen that? Go with it. But then if there are people who are uncomfortable by it, you know, then that's where you kind of come in there and just kind of maybe passively maybe maybe uh socratically engage with some of the people and making really strong claims about things but uh you know and, and just try to get a dialogue going and you try to try to meet it out like a cat you know and just kind of that's that's been my observation in general social i mean so i'm far from an expert but that's been my general observation nice layer oh go ahead dread I was going to say another thing too is um, is practicing steel manning uh, other people's arguments. Um, you know, you want to you want to build up what uh, somebody else is saying for the best possible interpretation, uh, so that uh, they feel empowered, um, and then and then destroy the argument. You know, so it's so called. Yeah. Growing the pine to chop it down. <laughs> right. Build it up to chop it down. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But I mean, you know, it's a skill that it takes a, it takes a lot of practice. Um, but uh, man, I, you know, I've watched some debates like say with uh, Jordan Peterson and, and Sam Harris and, uh, and that's a regular exercise they practice on stage. And it's a great demonstration of how a respectful 
um, debate can happen where two people who respect each other treat each, treat each other well um, and don't have to bash each other like the Flintstones with uh, a couple of clubs back and forth and trying to get their points across. You know, a healthy mm -hmm. debate is, is great, but it has to be done in a respectful manner. So it's encouraging that atmosphere, I think, is uh, helpful. Cool. Guys, we're nearing the end of the show. I did have a comment that I'd like to share. This is from our last episode or second to last episode. We were talking about change of plans. Why doesn't God just admit that he needs a new update to his plan? It doesn't seem to be working very well. And if he changed it, not only would he demonstrate that he does exist, but actually also demonstrate that he cares about us as well. Right. And so a change of plans would actually be a good thing, not necessarily a bad thing. And um, uh, Evangelical Carol 5336, who's been a longtime commenter on the show, said, either of these two fine human beings, speaking to both me and Larry, thank you very much, would make a much better deity than the God of Bible, <laughs> God of the Bible. <laughs> and they Most both, people would. <laughs> yeah, and they both have superhero vehicles, uh, a very cool motorcycle, and a James Bond smart car. Also, it yeah. is funny how Resurrection Day goes directly to April Fool's. Why don't more people recognize that? Thank you, Larry, and Ty, <laughs> for another great conversation. Cool. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Let's do a round table. Things that you'd love to plug. Um, uh, things that you would like to check out since this is the last episode, we won't say for next week, but things that you should check out at least once in your lifetime. Uh, for me, um, I do have my channel let's chat on YouTube. Uh, but I would encourage you to check out the variety of good dialogue that's going on on that platform, YouTube for people who are having conversations about things that are oftentimes very difficult to have conversations with. It doesn't even need to be within the scope of street epistemology. What I recommend is that you just make the search to try to find a variety of different talking heads. And I will challenge you on something. If you have a list of very profound thinkers that you know, and they all have the same sex, and they all have the same skin color, I would challenge you to try to find different kinds of people to add to that list because they have something of value to offer to. No, and I've always encouraged this on like Black History Month or like Mother's Day, learn the names and the contributions of a, like a, of a black chemist or a female engineer because they exist, they out there, they contribute every day. And a lot of people can name like Tesla and, 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 and other like profound names, but they tend to be controlled by history on who we celebrate. But the pedestal of success is, is far more diverse than what we're offered in our textbooks. So make that an opportunity for you to find different kinds of people who could be luminaries for you to, to have in your back pocket for, for good thoughts to be expressed. Uh, Rev, I'll throw it out at you. What would you recommend that people check out? Well, uh, I would shamelessly say uh, Paul Shapira and Matthew Broyles. Look at them both for the musical universe. It goes back like 20 years now. It's fantastic when you get booked on their content. It's so uh, great we happen to be happen to be a canonical character in the Washington universe. But that's aside the fact. Um, um, just great music. Um, and also, you know, my tagline I always go with is uh, be well, do good, and think for good. Okay. Larry, how much time do we got? Do we have enough time? <laughs> about three minutes. Okay, we got time. Sarah, what's your Sorry. thing that you plug? Sarah, what's the thing you plug? Um, I'm not really uh, plugging anything at the moment. However, um, I am going to stick around to find out what everyone else says. Okay, okay. Boudreaux, what do you got? If you're ever in Lexington, Kentucky, hit me up. Come to a summit. I'll make a summit. Right around your trip, if you want. He will. He will. He Absolutely. will. Cool. Too. He will show you some yeah. soccer games, too. They're really nice. Really good. Yeah. Had a good time. Um, Dread Pirate Higgs, anything that you'd like to plug? Sure. Well, you can check out my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. I do uh, weekly uplifting uh, short sermons on all kinds of interesting topics uh, weekly. Um, and Plug uh, another podcast, Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Uh, it, they've been running for very close to 20 years now. Um, it's an amazing podcast. Uh, Steve Novell, Dr. Steve Novell, is a physician, and he's got his brothers and uh, Kara Santa Maria. 
who has her own podcast and every week they're they're just amazing so if there was anything i could recommend outside of my own that would be the one to check out so cool nice larry what do you got oh i like you to... and just to ask will you finally admit that souls are real and that we we can end the show <laughs> on this level no, we all no know chance. it's true you have this no is your chance. last no chance larry true. God's no. watching the show and he's like, no. he, he cares about you. He loves nope. you. If you'd like to listen to prior shows and that's all there will be after this one, they are available at podcast through iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, podcast.com or iHeart.com, et cetera, et cetera. Just do a search for digitalfreethought.com or digital free thought radio hour. And if you're having trouble relieving religious beliefs behind, you can get help from recovering from religion. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next. Well, I guess we won't see you next week. <laughs> you didn't change the script, though. <laughs> Almost didn't. Thank you for anyway. everything, guys. We've been Yeah, yeah thank you all for, for coming Thanks, to the Larry. show. Yes. Thank you, Larry. Bye-bye, uh, y'all. Bye-bye, yeah. y'all. See you.